In this video, I'm going to show you how to record journal entries for a company that uses process costing. So let's jump right into an example. So we've got a company called Bookman, and they make books using two sequential production departments. They've got the printing department, where the books are first, uh, we print the pages, and then we transfer the pages to the binding department, where they're bound into a book. So we've got the printing department, and then the product moves to the binding department. So the work in process of the printing department is going to become the work in process of the binding department. And when the binding department is done, we're going to transfer the cost into finished goods inventory. So that's the flow of costs. And here are the figures we're going to use. And so we're going to start with the printing department. And we're going to say, OK, we are requisitioning some raw materials into production, $100,000 worth. So we're going to need to credit raw materials inventory and we're going to debit work and process inventory. But because we have sequential departments, we're going to debit work and process inventory specific to printing. There's going to be a WIP account for printing and a WIP account for the binding department. They're each going to have their own separate work and process inventory accounts. Now, the direct labor, we remember, we, we do not expense that with this is a product cost and so we're going to debit work and process inventory for printing for two hundred thousand dollars so the labor becomes an asset and then we're going to credit if we haven't paid the wages yet we'll credit wages payable if we paid the wages we'll credit cash okay and so forth now when we apply manufacturing overhead in the printing department we're going to debit work and process inventory for four hundred thousand dollars and then we're going to credit manufacturing overhead. Now, remember, I talked about this when we did job order costing. The manufacturing overhead account is a temporary account. So whenever we have actual manufacturing overhead, which is distinct from applied manufacturing overhead, which is applied using a predetermined overhead rate using budgeted overhead, when we have actual manufacturing overhead, we're going to debit manufacturing overhead. So we would debit, it, it, let's say we got a utility bill and we'd say, okay, uh, let's say it was $80. We would debit manufacturing overhead for $80 and then credit utility payable for $80. So whenever you have actual manufacturing overhead costs incurred, you debit the manufacturing overhead account. However, in this example, we are having applied manufacturing overhead using our predetermined overhead rate so we are going to credit the manufacturing overhead account. And that, that is actually similar to job order costing. Now, when we go and say, okay, we are done with, with the printing department. We, we, have, we are done with $550,000 worth of, of product. That is going to go to the binding department. Remember, work in process of printing eventually becomes the work in process of binding. So what we're going to do is we're going to credit work in process inventory for printing for 550,000 and then debit whip inventory for binding for the same amount. All we're doing there, we're just going from one asset account to another. Whip inventory for uh, printing, the 550 is now whip inventory for binding. So just we're crediting one work and process inventory account, uh, debiting the other. Now the binding department, they also requisition some materials into production. So you're gonna take it out of raw materials inventory, you're gonna credit that and you're going to debit work and process inventory for binding. Now, similarly, they also apply some direct labor. So that's going to be debited to work and process inventory for binding. This is that $60,000. And again, you would credit wages payable or cash if you've already paid the cash. And then now when they apply the manufacturing overhead and binding, again, this is applied manufacturing overhead, not the actual. So that $150,000, we're going to debit work and process inventory for 150,000 and then credit manufacturing overhead. Again, when, whenever we apply overhead, we are gonna credit the overhead account. Now, I didn't give any examples here in this, in this scenario of actual overhead, but again, I, I gave the one with the utilities, but, but anything at all where we say, okay, we actually incur some overhead, we are going to debit manufacturing overhead. So if, for example, if we, we had to pay the, the wages of this uh, security guard who um, watches the factory. Okay, so that would be a product cost. That'd be an example of manufacturing overhead. Let's say we pay $400 to that, that security guard. So we debit manufacturing overhead for $400 and then we would credit cash for $400. Okay, so actual manufacturing overhead costs are debited. 
and then when we apply the overhead we credit manufacturing overhead i didn't focus on that a lot because we talked about that with job order costing it's the same idea now ultimately the binding department they finish hundred eighty thousand dollars worth of product so what we're going to do then when they finish we take it out of the work and in process inventory for binding we're going to credit that for 180 but we're going to debit finished goods now that's because we had two production departments here if we had a third production department there was some third production department then we would be crediting whip inventory for binding and debiting whip inventory for that third production department but we don't have one this 180,000 is now in finished goods so if we were to sell all of that then we would debit cost of goods sold and credit finished goods for 180 if we were to turn around and sell everything now if you're curious in this example what is the ending inventory for the whip account for printing the whip account for binding you can actually go so i've created a t account so the ending balance for printing would be 150,000. Th these are just the three uh, manufacturing costs that entered the whip inventory for printing and then we transferred out 550,000 of costs remember this journal entry here so we end up 150,000 ending balance for the printing whip account and for binding whip account we end up with 620,000 and that is we've got the direct uh, material direct labor and overhead applied those three costs but also the 550 that came in from the printing department so we have all those debits and then we credit the 180,000 when we finished when we transferred to finished goods so we'd have for this company here 150,000 whip inventory and printing 620,000 whip inventory and binding and we would have 180,000 in finished goods inventory